My name is Greg Dawes. I'm an application engineer with Desai Solutions. I've been with Desai for about eight and a half years now, and I'm one of uh, uh, the leads here on the pre-sale side for SolidWorks Manage. I have also with me John MacArthur. John, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Am I on audio? Yeah. Great. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm John MacArthur. I'm services manager for Desai Solutions, and I've likely talked to many of you over the years in uh, Michigan and abroad. Um, I'm man on the team that um, that is you know rolling out SolidWorks Manage as well as our PDM implementations and such as well uh, as the pre-sales side of things. And uh, I'm engaged in most of our early on engagements with SolidWorks Manage at this point. So uh, Greg will be handling the presentation. I'll be here to answer any kind of more top level questions and then anything that comes in via questions in the uh, the webinar chat as well. Speaking of the questions, it's a good little uh, segue to uh, uh, how we'll handle questions for the webinar here. Uh, there is a questions section within GoToWebinar. So if you have a question at any time, feel free to pop over there. I think I'm gonna have uh, John chime in at the end of each one of these pillars, uh, open it up to questions and give you guys a couple of minutes uh, to uh, ask questions and give John a couple of minutes uh, to go over those questions and answer them. Uh, John, that sounds like a good plan. Absolutely. All right. All right, we've got a, a couple of minutes for people to join, so we will go ahead and get started then. Uh, SolidWorks Manage, um, the, the functionality of it, and just to give you a bit of an expectation here, we're not gonna dive deep into each one of these subjects, but we're really just giving you an, an introduction to SolidWorks Manage and what it's intended to do uh, for you and your company. Uh, and really, SolidWorks has divided this up into the four pillars of functionality, with the first being project management, then uh, bills of materials and records, process management, and dashboards and reports. Overall, SolidWorks Manage is an item-based data management system. And in SolidWorks Manage, we call those items, we call them records. Uh, it works in conjunction with SolidWorks PDM, so it's not replacing SolidWorks PDM. It gets bolted onto the top of it. And it can also pull data from other business systems, things like ERP, MRP, other databases. Uh, and the project management tools in SolidWorks Manage add things like stage gates, they add timelines, and milestones, and a, a Gantt style of a chart. We can view resource utilization and include uh, user tasks and assigned tasks and timesheets to track progress on a project. Process management is analogous to workflows in PDM, uh, with the difference being pushing items through a workflow or records through a workflow and not just files. And that gives us some benefits that we'll talk more about when we talk about processes. Uh, bombs and records uh, allow us to work with non-CAD data and CAD data right next to each other. Uh, we can still add them to product bills of materials, create bomb variants, and generally work with both CAD and non-CAD data. And then finally, dashboards and reporting to be able to look at a snapshot in time and uh, over uh, trends over time, or uh, which, which is the difference between dashboards and reports. We can create interactive graphic dashboards to display information. And we can also configure reports that we can either run through a process. As soon as a project hits a certain process, we can run a report or we can run those on demand. And that really gives us more of a deliverable, uh, a formatted Word document, let's say, or a PDF of a report that we can run on a certain type of item in SolidWorks Manage. So we'll start with project management. Uh, today, managing projects typically involves multiple fairly disconnected tools, such as like email, Excel, maybe even a project like Pro Microsoft Project. They're all good tools. Uh, I've used most of those, but they aren't connected specifically to the engineering data in your CAD. So the idea of taking our engineering CAD data, our SOLIDWORKS files, and the non-CAD data, and these tools that are just kind of ideas, like a timeline, uh, and putting those together and tracking them all in one place and associating all of those different types of items to each other. Timelines are broken down into required tasks, as people complete tasks, it fills out that timeline. Tasks are broken down and recorded through documents, and we have to have reference documents when we assign somebody a task of, hey, this is what you're working on, and th these are the resources you need. 
uh, including CAD data too. You're going to need this assembly to run a simulation, and you're also going to need this uh, procedural standard documentation to run the simulation on this assembly. So let's jump in and show you the project management tools available in SOLIDWORKS Manage. First off, the user interface uh, of Manage is set up in a very similar way to Microsoft Outlook. The bottom left of the Manage window is our navigation to the different areas, things like documents, processes, and what we'll start with, projects. The projects are listed out in the main viewport, and when you select an individual project, details about that project are listed below, including project properties, bills and materials, any related files, and this planning tab. Opening the project in its own window, we can further dive into the Gantt chart style project timeline. Here we can see the completed percentage of each stage and to make modifications, uh, it's a simple drag and drop. We can assign resources to each stage as well as tasks. Tasks can be assigned to users where it could show up on their homepage when they log in. They would update the task as they complete it or book time towards it. Uh, the whole time a manager has visibility to the project as a whole. Project task creation. Uh, creating a task is really simple. It's just a right click and you'll fill out the details such as the, the subject, add some notes to better detail the task, and an estimate of the time we believe this task will take. Uh, here we can attach supporting documents as well for the task. A simple example is a PDF for the testing procedure. But what's unique to manage is the ability to reach right into our PDM vault and attach the SOLIDWORKS assembly we want to run the test on. When the user goes to tackle this task, they have everything they need to complete the task without hunting for all the required files. In a SOLIDWORKS bill of material, uh, a list of all the modeled components uh, within an assembly are shown. For some companies, that works great, but for others, they consider that just a parts list. And a complete bill of material is everything that ships with the project. Uh, in Manage, every item or record can have its own bill of material, including projects. We can add records to the BOM just as we add, added them to tasks earlier, no matter if they're CAD or non-CAD data. So you can see here I added a uh, SOLIDWORKS sub-assembly or top-level assembly, and then also added uh, non-CAD data, such as the packaging or a plug that we haven't modeled, just items that we have available to us in Manage. With a Gantt chart timeline of the project and tasks that have allocated time, we can extend that further into timesheets. So as an engineer, we can add a new line to our timesheet and reference an individual project and a stage of the project, uh, reporting the time spent on that particular stage. These timesheets can follow a process, like an, an approval process for the end of the week, and reports can be created from the batch of timesheets from your, your team of engineers, let's say. Finally, in the uh, project management side of things, uh, we'll talk about uh, unique requirements for projects that may not be out of the box SOLIDWORKS manage functionality. Uh, we'll use issues and risks as our examples. Manage has this concept of uh, special objects. In this case, we've built a custom object to handle project issues where we document the description, it automatically assigns an issue number, and we've built in a conditionally formatted priority. So these are just kind of custom objects that we can set up and manage. Uh, another example is risk. This one has different risk properties, failure, pro failure probability, failure impact, and it calculates uh, from those a simple risk value. But it's the same general principle as the issues. We can build our own custom objects for all uh, different types of projects. So a recap on project management, I'll open it up to questions at this time and I'll give John some uh, time to answer those. But projects are their own items. They can have their own custom properties. They can be pushed through processes. Projects can have related files and references. Uh, the planning portion of it, we have a Gantt chart driven uh, style of managing the project over a time. Stages and milestones can be set up. These can be uh, uh, templatized, so we can run a new project and it already has the style of Gantt chart that we want. Tasks can be associated to stages and assigned to users, attaching files and references to individual tasks. Then special objects that I showed there at the end where we can uh, build up our own custom uh, areas that we want to track things that are specific to our company. 
And then project bills of materials add all types to a project's bomb, not just CAD documents. I'll pause here. John, do you see any questions coming in? I do not, but all I'm seeing is the main chat area. I don't know if there's a second area for questions besides that. I'm seeing one here. It says, does manage require PDM to function? And if so, which level of PDM? John, I'll let you take that. Sure. Uh, so manage by definition does not require PDM to function. However, uh, included in your managed licensing is PDM professional. Uh, it does not tie to PDM standard, uh, and it does require pro if you do want a PDM tie. Um, but we do recommend that, that you use PDM's archive server uh, to be able to store the data and then manage to simply bolts on top of that to, to host uh, additional database information relative to the PDM database. Uh, but included in your licensing with manage is PDM. Uh, professional, and if you have existing PDM, you can upgrade your existing PDM professional to SOLIDWORKS Managed Licensing. Thanks, John. I'll keep uh, keep you in the loop on more questions coming in. Uh, we just got another one. Uh, can you show an example of bond management with CAD and purchase parts? Uh, that would just be items, uh, would be your purchase parts. Uh, and we can treat those if you've modeled them as Solver's CAD documents that we can attach to a project. Or if you don't want to uh, model those, you can just create a brand new item inside of Solver's Manage and attach that item to a bill of material. All right, I think that's all the questions we have for the project management arena. We'll move on to bombs and records. PDM does a really good job of capturing the SOLIDWORKS bill of materials, but adding non-CAD data to a bill of material in PDM is a really manual process, and it has pretty limited flexibility with other requirements of a, of a bill of material downstream, such as uh, ERP integration and having the correct properties on that, on that document. Uh, we have the restriction of requiring a file of some sort, so you have to make like a blank text document or something to represent that uh, non-CAD data uh, and independently moving the bill of material through a workflow without affecting the top level assembly just isn't doable in PDM. They are, uh, again, we require files and the bomb isn't a file. Uh, so let me show you some of the benefits that SOLIDWORKS Manage has when it comes to bill of materials and records. Uh, as shown earlier, we can edit a bomb and add a non-CAD document. And Scott, this may show you a little bit more of what your question was. We just go to the bill of material of it, and there's some simple buttons there to add a file. Just brings up a browser window, and we go find the file that we want to add, in this case, a PDF, and we've added that PDF to the bill of material for this project. Much like project tasks, we can actually create a task associated to not the project, but to the bill of material. In this case, we'll assign a task to the graphics department to add a logo to the bench seat. Kind of skipping over some of the minutiae here, but uh, you can see the window that we've got available uh, to assign that task and then either assign it to an individual user or assign it to a group. Whether these are regional differences or departmental differences, you may need a bomb variant for a product. Uh, here we'll create a task to localize the installation instructions for a new region. So we're doing a region variant here. Uh, even though the task isn't complete, we can build out the multiple bombs. We'll hit play there in the video. Uh, adding the language specific installation instructions. So we'll create a new task called localize the instructions, assign that to a group, give them some details on that. As they start to complete, you can see that bar start to fill out and then tabs along the bottom of that bill of material window show us that we have different bombs for production, a regional uh, for German, and then a regional for the US, and we can individually add items to those 
in, uh, kind of variants of that bomb. And then finally, in the bill of material and records section, uh, just like projects and timesheets, uh, bills of materials can be sent through a process for approval. So if you're a PDM user, you can think of this as a workflow. We can send the bomb itself without all the CAD files through its own process. We'll talk about processes a little bit later, but that's unique to, uh, to manage is that we can send bombs through a workflow independent of the CAD data. We just right click it and choose which uh, process that we want to send it through. So a recap on bombs and records, uh, uh, bill of materials can be their own item in SOLIDWORKS Manage. It's not uh, a just a view of the SOLIDWORKS data, it's its own item. You can freely add CAD and non-CAD items to a bill of material, and we can create variants, whether those are regional or departmental, and then we can use processes uh, with bills of materials and push bills of materials through their own individual process or the same process as CAD files, either way, we can even uh, revision bills of materials. I'll pause here again uh, and open it up to any questions regarding the bill of materials and records uh, inside of SOLIDWORKS Manage. All right, gave it a few seconds there, but no particular questions regarding uh, bills of materials or records. So we will move on. Process management. Uh, if you're coming from a PDM system, uh, you're probably familiar or specifically, uh, oh, I'll back up here. We got a couple of questions come in for bombs and records. Uh, can we import our current bill of material data uh, located in uh, Access? John, I'll let you take that one. So access specifically, um, I would have to look into. Uh, I know that we can import information from other databases. Um, I'd have to fire it up to look at see if whether access was one of them. Uh, I believe that it is, but I would have to get back to you on that. Um, you can import um, bill of material data from Excel as well uh, and, and build off of an Excel spreadsheet as well. Um, and then I know other SQL databases and ODBC connections are allowed, but I'll definitely have to, uh, I'll take a note and, and look at the, uh, the access DB. Then a second question came in, do bombs include actual manufacturing processes, laser cut, form, paint, assemble, etc.? Yeah, we can, uh, we can make uh, bomb variants based on the manufacturing process. That's one approach to it. There's multiple approaches to it. Or we can have properties associated to each item where we assign a property called manufacturing process and we assign a value of laser, cut, form, paint, assemble. So my point is that there's multiple approaches to being able to track uh, or divide up or sort what process that a item in the bill of material needs to go through. John, I may have stole your thunder there. Anything you wanted to add to that? No, I think you got it covered. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to process management. If you're coming from uh, PDM, you're probably fam familiar with workflows. Uh, workflows have been really powerful for our PDM customers, uh, but a fundamental requirement for workflows in PDM, SOLIDWORKS PDM, is a document, a file. Uh, for engineering changes, we've kind of gotten around this by forcing a, a, a document, whether it be a Word document, Excel, even an XML file, to be a traveler uh, that kind of re represents the idea of the change, it's like the document that moves along. Uh, Manage just allows us to skip that requirement of a document and start a process without a document. Just start a new EC, let's say. Uh, other examples could be like a procedural change or a compliance process, a whole host of others, uh, any sort of process that we need to go through, we can fire that off without a document in SOLIDWORKS Manage. Not to say that at the end, we can't have a document, but we'll talk a little bit more about that with dashboards and reports. So some examples of this, uh, to introduce processes, we'll actually start in SOLIDWORKS PDM. 
uh, a lot of the functionality in SOLIDWORKS Manage can be initiated from PDM. Uh, a Manage tab is added to the PDM interface that gives us vis visibility to manage information specific to a selected file. We can see that there have been a few requests to strengthen this ring based on the part failing, and we're getting that information from Manage uh, from the PDM user interface, which is pretty neat. Directly from PDM, I can right-click on a file and we can kick off a new engineering change in SOLIDWORKS Manage, adding the uh, important information to making this change. Now, these, these uh, uh, areas that we're filling out are set up uh, ahead of time. So that means that this list of the different properties and their groupings, those red asterisks mean that they're required. All of that can be set up specific to what you need uh, as a part of this process. So I'm filling out the properties for this particular EC. The reviewer in this case is Dave, but we can uh, assign uh, individuals to the specific stages of the process, something that's unique compared to PDM workflows. So the first stage of the process is gonna be handled by uh, Mike, and we can change which individual or groups are assigned to each stage of this EC process. Just like projects and bills of materials, processes can have tasks. Uh, in this case, single or multiple tasks can be assigned to each stage of the process and all assigned to different users. This just gives us a lot more flexibility than we had in SOLIDWORKS PDM workflows. Uh, in this case, we'll add an ad hoc task uh, outside of the automatically generated ones through the process, um, adding the detail and the hours we expect the engineer is going to need. Where did all these tasks go? Well, when a user logs in, they can look at all assigned tasks, their details, and even display them on a calendar in order to kind of triage their workload. Processes can be really simple, or they can be complex, and they're completely customizable. Uh, opening up one of these individual processes will show you the it'll show you the past, uh, the present, the future stages, who has par participated in which stages, and who is responsible for the upcoming stages. What's really neat and unique that I think they've added to the software, which is uh, really cool, is this idea that we can move items from one process to another, uh, giving you flexibility to create really small, manageable processes but move them in between different processes. So maybe in this case, you've separated your engineering change request process versus your engineering change order and then an engineering change notification. So maybe those are all slightly different processes. We can have three separate processes that hand off to each other as we move along. As a recap for the process management side of things, uh, processes are their own objects. They can have their own custom properties. We can create outputs as we move from stage to stage. Uh, maybe we fire off a report when we go from uh, pending approval to approved. Uh, we can fully control the access and rights to each individual uh, stage and their transitions from stage to stage. We can uh, assign these to objects. So we can have a bill of material process, a document process, multiple different processes associated to different item types. And we can even assign related files and references as we move along these stages. Uh, the workflow designer that you see in front of you right now, you can see it's very Visio-like uh, graphical uh, interface. This is where we assign conditions, users, notifications that get fired off, tasks, and uh, maybe outputs for each stage and transition through this uh, process. Uh, we can even change the PDM workflow state through a process change in manage. So maybe when things move from pending approval to approved in manage, that's when we kick off that the CAD files move from pending approval to approved. Uh, and then we can assign reports to processes as well. We can, uh, maybe when it hits that approved at the end, it automatically creates a report based on uh, the timing of when uh, the uh, bill of material in this case uh, went from each stage to stage. I'll open it up for questions regarding the process management side of SOLIDWORKS Manage. I'll write on a couple of questions. John, is there anything you wanted to add about process management? 
I think you uh, you covered that pretty well. Um, one thing I did want to come back around to, I was looking into the access database question from earlier. Um, I don't see a direct import to a bill of materials from access the way that you can with Excel. However, on something called a data source on the back end, you can point to access DB information. So I would assume that from the access database connection source, we can get that info available. It would probably become a record within manage and then you could access that for bill of material variants moving forward. Um, definitely be something I want to further test, but I believe from what I'm seeing, the answer would be yes, we can use uh, access DB bill of material records Move Thanks, John. All right, I don't think we're getting any questions regarding the process uh, pillar. We'll move on to the last pillar before we wrap up, and that's dashboards and reports. Uh, with more and more interconnected data, we saw this with PDM, and now we're kind of adding another layer on top of it, understanding that data as either a moment in time or as a trend over time becomes more important. Uh, Manage handles this by using dashboards and reports. Whether you're looking for information on projects, timesheets, bills of materials, special ob objects like we showed before, like that risk section, or even data stored outside of PDM, like in a, a separate SQL database or through an ODBC connection, uh, we can create really rich dashboards and reports to display this data. Dashboards are a live look into your data. You, have, uh, you can have multiple dashboards for viewing your tasks or viewing all your projects as a whole. Dashboards are really flexible in the way that the data is displayed with a ton of different type, uh, widgets and chart types, which all allow you to customize the way you see your data uh, live. Reports, on the other hand, uh, in contrast to dashboards, are more of a, a deliverable-based uh, you can build and format reports that can be run on, on different records within the vault. You can have a ton of different report types for different uh, formatting for a clean and repeatable report. Uh, in contrast to SOLIDWORKS PDM, where we can run SQL queries, but that gives us really raw data. Uh, Manage is going to do both for us. It allows us to build up this report uh, through a really neat tool based on DevExpress. Uh, and then it's going to format that data as well, so we can get a really nice deliverable at the end. We're getting the data through a search, that raw data, and we're also formatting it uh, based on this report through this report builder. Uh, wrap up on dashboards and reporting uh, is we have a dashboard configurator, which is uh, just a drag and drop functionality a full range of graphical representations like charts and gauges, tree maps, even geopoints. Uh, we can associate it to other databases, uh, including PDM or Manage or another uh, database system out there to gather up all this data and show it on a dashboard. Uh, we can create multiple dashboards as well. Maybe you want to divide it up by the group that signs in, or you want to have multiple dashboards for yourself, ones that show timesheets and ones that show projects. You get all of those different options. Then uh, the report configurator is actually based on DevExpress, uh, which is what you're seeing in front of you here. Uh, if any of you have used De DevExpress before, you can actually go out and YouTube DevExpress and see a lot of videos on this already. Uh, it's fully customizable for uh, printing, formatting, uh, the data, the charts and graph types that we can add to it uh, and to build up these reports. These reports can be uh, on-demand reports where we just right-click an, an item and run a report on it, or we can have these automatically fired off from a process that you saw earlier. We'll go ahead and open up uh, the questions regarding dashboards and reporting in SOLIDWORKS Manage. If I see a couple questions come in, I will back up to that. I uh, will also just give you some generic uh, time for questions at the end, too. So to wrap up here, uh, we covered project management. We covered bombs and records, process management, and dashboards and reporting. These are the four pillars of functionality that come with SOLIDWORKS Manage.
for more information and kind of a call to action for you here, if you're interested still in uh, maybe getting a, a demo or talking to one of us specific to your questions about SolidWorks Manage, uh, head out to DecideSolutions.com and under Solutions, Data Management, SolidWorks Manage, we'll give you a few more resources to dig into and even uh, a box there to request some uh, for us to get involved and help you out. Appreciate everybody joining this kind of short webinar as an introduction to SolidWorks Manage.